Merry Christmas. So when I look at my old projects, I pretty much just want to gouge my eyes out. And that's not because of the spaghetti code, although that is a little part of it. Uh, it's just because there's no structure. And structure is something that as you learn as a developer, uh, it will adapt and evolve to your style. And it's pretty much always opinionated. So something that you think is awesome, someone else will think is just dog shit. Uh, so what I want to do is show you kind of like what I have evolved over my development uh, career and hopefully save you a few years of trial and error um, and get you kind of like into a good uh, structural workflow so that you can start your projects uh, nice and cleanly. So as I said, it's very opinionated, but let's just jump straight in. So I'll just tidy this up a little. Okay, so let's start with the hierarchy here. So. I like to split mine up into separate groups and I find that no matter what I put here, they will always fit into these five groups. So the first one is managers and what these are are scene specific, like kind of like orchestrator classes. They, they control the scene. So uh, this one will be the flow of the game, whereas this one will be, you know, managing the units. I'll get more into those shortly. In setup is where I put my camera, my lights, my, my event system, uh, or like a post-processing volume. Uh, everything goes in setup, just kind of keeps it out of the way. Environment will be where I am spawning, for example, uh, like tiles of a grid or uh, terrain or trees or anything like that will go in environment. Uh, sometimes I'll even have a subfolder here that will be like uh, units and that's where I'll spawn my units under that. And canvases, pretty self-explanatory. It's just where I put all my canvases. Uh, usually I have like two or three canvases in a scene. Systems are the only objects in my scene that are using don't destroy on load. So I have this one, this main object that's calling don't destroy on load. And then I've just got all these sub objects here uh, that are just normal uh, static instances, uh, which I'll go into in a moment. I like to keep all of my don't destroy on load objects, my persistent objects all under one kind of like hierarchy to keep it clean. All right, so that's the hierarchy. Let's go over to uh, the project, which is the meats and potatoes. And let's go through this one by one. So I prefix my scripts folder with an underscore and that's just because it puts it up to the top and scripts is my by far my most commonly used folder. So it's always nice having it up top, easy to find. Now, before we get into looking at the uh, code, just know that you don't need to understand everything as I'm going through it, okay? Uh, I'm just gonna quickly go through the base concepts of it. You should download the project yourself and look through, I've, I've commented pretty much everything. So uh, find what you like, throw away what you don't like, but the hopes of this is just, it, it's gonna help you along your way a little bit. Don't worry if you don't understand it as I'm going through it, okay? Not vital. So let's start with the managers. We've got the two here, game manager and unit manager. As you can see, these two uh, correlate to these. So let's pop into the game manager and you can see that it is deriving from a uh, singleton class, which I have down here in my utilities. Uh, if we go into it, okay, so I'm not gonna go through exactly what a singleton is, but the base rundown of it is it just allows us to have a single static instance of this class that we can easily access anywhere. Uh, well, this here is actually more of a, just a static uh, instance of the class. It's not exactly a singleton. Uh, this one here, uh, singleton persistent, actually is a singleton because we're ensuring that there's only one version of this actual object. Uh, and we're also calling don't destroy on load. So persistent as in it's gonna persist through scenes. But yeah, as I said, just a quick run, run through of what it actually is. So back to our game manager, uh, as you can see, it's actually inheriting from uh, that singleton class. So basically what a game manager is, is a way to manage the state, like the flow of your game. Uh, if you can see here, we've just got this enum with a, with a whole bunch of different states here. And we have this function change state, which takes in that enum. On start, we call with the very first state to get the ball rolling and uh, we, we set the state, comes down here to this enum. All right, what state is it? Is it starting? Yes, it is. Let's call this handle starting here. Uh, we'll do a bunch of stuff here, like set up the environment, do some cinematics. Um, and then once we're ready, we'll change the state again to the next state in the, in the list, which will be spawning heroes. So we'll do the same thing again, come down here to spawning heroes. Uh, for example, here, I'm calling the unit manager to spawn the heroes. Once that's done, I'll then go to the next one, right? 
And then after this, it will be like the hero's turn, the enemy's turn. Uh, and then we might say, all right, uh, did we win? Did we lose? If so, go to these ones. Otherwise, let's head back to hero turn and repeat uh, until there is a win condition or a lose condition. So this is just a nice basic enum based game manager, uh, which will work for 90% of uh, small to medium games. If you're deciding to do like a complex game, like if you're setting out to make GTA, <laughs> please don't. Uh, if you are, this will have some scaling issues. You might want to look into something like a state machine instead, but this is good honestly for 90% of games that you're probably going to set out as, as a single or small team dev, dev team. Uh, so uh, a good segue here would probably be get to go to the unit manager. So here in our spawning the heroes, we actually call the singleton instance of this unit manager. So that's how you use the uh, singleton uh, static instance and we spawn heroes. So let's go into there. So this is the function and in here, we're just gonna spawn one unit and we're gonna say we want the tarot dev unit. So then in this function, uh, we're doing a bunch of magic here, which I'm not gonna get into yet. I'll come back to it. Uh, but then as you can see down here, like once that's done, we then go to the next state. So that's that wraps up the game state manager. Okay, next is the scriptables folder. And in here is just uh, where I keep my scriptable objects. If you don't know what a scriptable object is, it's just a class which derives from scriptable objects. And that just allows us to create basically these little data objects here, just containers to uh, kind of like pull a bunch of information. Uh, you can put functions and stuff here, but for us, we're just using it as a data container. So on this, I've just got uh, the faction. So is this a hero or an enemy? Uh, I've got stats here. So stats is a struct with health, attack power, and travel distance. Uh, you might have a whole bunch of different stats uh, depending on what game you're making. But the fact that it's a struct is very important and I will touch on that a little bit later. The, the reason I like to put my stats on the scriptable object and not the object prefab itself, like the spawned unit prefab, is because you might want to be looking through a menu to select units or like a, um, what are they called? Like a monsterpedia or something where, where you're looking through all the enemies, you might want to see their stats there. And if you're holding them on the actual uh, monster prefab or the unit prefab, how, you, you have no way to get the stats in like a, a proper way, right? You don't want to spawn the prefab, get the stats. So now that it's here, we've got access to it in the menus and also when we spawn it in game. Uh, we've also actually got a reference to the prefab uh, for the unit, which we'll get into a bit later. So, so that's what we use to actually spawn the prefab into the game. That's what a scriptable object is. So that's our base unit scriptable object. And then we've also got like the actual uh, derived class from that. So as you can see, it's deriving from the unit base. And in this, we just, as this is a hero, we've got a hero type enum. And a nifty little thing uh, with scriptable objects is you can create asset menu uh, attribute. And that what that allows us to do is right click, create, and we can actually just click this and it will uh, allow us to create a scriptable object. So we could like uh, another hero here called Snorlax and uh, you know, fill that out, give it some studies. Uh, but we won't do that right now. So that's the scriptable objects. Then we've got our systems here, which is this object down here. So we've got our main systems object, and this is the only class that I'm going to inherit from singleton persistent. And if you remember, that's just like a singleton class, which uh, calls don't destroy on load so that we can put this uh, in the first scene. And even after 50 scene loads, it's still gonna be there. As well as if you've got, if you actually put this prefab in all uh, five different scenes that you've got, the first one will be the only one that ever lives. So in the second scene, when it comes around, uh, it's going to come down here. It's going to say, is, is there an instance already available? If there is, then just destroy this new instance and uh, just keep using the old instance. So yeah, that's just the system and it just sits there. Uh, it just acts as our one single don't destroy on load, uh, kind of like, um, master object and then underneath there we've got our audio system and our resource system so our audio system is just super simple audio implementation you'll definitely need to, need to expand this but basically it's got uh, play music from this music source and then we've also got play sounds from the sound source and it takes in a position so you can just uh, so you still have your 3d sound uh, but yeah as I said very simple uh, you'll definitely need to expand it and then we've got our resource system so this is just like uh, one 
primary repository where you can keep all the references to your scriptable objects. So as you saw here, I'm storing my scriptable objects in resources and then here heroes, and then I've got my scriptable object here. So in our resource system, I've got a list of this uh, scriptable object type. And in a wake, I'm calling assemble resources. And the, re the fact that it's in resources folder means that we can actually use resources load all. And we're gonna say, all right, of this type in this folder, which as you can see here, and just make a list of them. And I also just like to make a dictionary of them uh, using the hero type as the key. So now I can easily just say get uh, example hero, taking the type T and just use the key to quickly look up in this dictionary. Not too relevant for performance, but you might have a list that's got like 10,000 items. So it might be nice to just quickly, quickly grab an item by key. So yeah, this is just my uh, repository for my scriptable objects. And then we've just got these two last folders here. So let's just quickly go through them. So this is actually how I organize my class hierarchy for units. And this can be also the same for like tiles or uh, weapons or anything you're doing, right? So first I have a unit base class. And this is the class that every unit will inherit from at its core. So we know that every unit will need stats. Uh, every unit will take damage, right? And I've also got this uh, function here, set stats. So if we go actually go back to our example unit manager, I showed you this before and said I would come back to it. So what we're doing here is we're calling our resource system and we're, we're using that get example hero function that I made. So now we've got a tarot dev scriptable object. So I'm spawning it uh, just using the prefab from that scriptable object, if you remember. Then I'm grabbing the base stats. And as you remember, this is a struct. So we're actually creating a new copy of uh, the stats here, because we do not want to change the base stats. Okay, that, that's like set in stone, it's always gonna be that way. Uh, and now that we've got a copy of this stats object uh, struct, we can now apply specific modifications to it. So as I've written here, it might be like you've taken a potion before a battle, or you're working with a few specific heroes, so there's like a good team synergy or something. So I'm just modifying the stats here, and then I'm finally calling the set stats function on that unit, uh, which then in turn just sets the actual stats of the unit. So that's the unit base. Then of course we've got our hero base and our enemy base. So the enemy base might have some um, AI logic in there, right? Like, cause we're obviously not controlling them. So they might have, you know, do their turn. Uh, that'll be AI. Then we've got our hero base, which obviously there's no AI here. So we're actually controlling this. So we'll, we'll be listening to like on mouse down, have they clicked us, have they selected us? Uh, have they actually executed an attack or, or a move? So yeah, obviously hero needs different logic than enemies. And then also I didn't actually mention this, but in our game manager, we've got these two events here. So uh, when we change the state, I'm saying on before state change, uh, and I'm firing an event and then I'm actually handling the logic here. I've, I've found that sometimes you need it before the state changes and sometimes you need it after the state changes. So I've just added them both. And the reason that's handy is because in our hero unit, we want to allow the unit to move again once it's the hero's turn. So we're checking if this new state is in fact hero's turn. If it is, let's set can move to true again. Right, And then once we actually do the move, we'll say can move false. And then this will actually tie in to if you can select the unit again. So here, as you can see, I've got on mouse down. Is the current game manager state hero turn? If it's not, well, it's not time to move, so return. Has this unit already moved? If it already has, then return. And then if those two checks pass, then we can actually like, you know, start doing the turn. So that's the unit, uh, the hero base. And then finally, we've got the actual hero class. So then that derives from hero base. So then you'll have the actual specific uh, hero logic. So if you've got a warrior, you might have a charge. If you've got a mage, you might have like a, a fireball or something, you know. And just as a quick example of using uh, one of the systems, uh, on tarot dev, I've got a reference to an audio clip. And then in my start method, I'm just referencing the audio system and playing that sound. Uh, so you'll see that if you press play, I'll actually do that. Pop. And also I'm, I'm printing out every single time the state changes. So that's the structure that I always put my units in. There's always a base class and then uh, the faction class basically, and then like the specific unit 
uh, class. Cool, so that wraps up units. Now we've just got utilities. So utilities was just the singleton class, as you saw here. And also I've got a uh, static class, which is helpers. And this is where I'll put just like a whole bunch of useful static and extension methods. So there's one example here, which is destroy children, which sounds pretty horrible, but uh, we'll give it a transform and then we'll just loop through its children and destroy them all. Uh, so that's helpers and that's all the scripts. So let's just close that and we'll just go through the rest of these folders, which is basically nothing. Uh, audio, self-explanatory, prefabs. Uh, I'll organize it with a nice folder structure. Resources, that's where we put anything that we want to actually use resources load with. Uh, so definitely the scriptable objects, scenes and uh, sprites. All right, and that's actually it. So uh, that was a lot to digest, I know, especially as a new dev. Uh, but I hope it helps you streamline your uh, projects and kind of like fill some of the gaps that you weren't too sure on. As I said, it's very opinionated. Take the parts that you like and throw the parts that you don't, uh, but download the project and just go through it uh, at your own pace and kind of like digest it. Uh, if you feel like supporting me, I've actually just made a Patreon. I'm currently sitting at zero patrons. Uh, so if you want to support me, just head down there. Um, I will be delighted to uh, get pinged that I've got my first Patreon. So yeah, that's it. Uh, hope you enjoyed it. Hope you had fun with me. Merry Christmas, and I will see you in the next video. Bye.